Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. My name is Daniel and I am a 2D illustrator and in this one I want to talk to you guys about art expectations. Now this has been a topic that's been on my mind for quite a while but I would like to give a shout out to a couple of people first before we begin. First one is my good friend Adam, thank you so much for suggesting this topic as well as Abs Art on Instagram and Archaic Authority on Instagram as well. I've had conversations with all of these people about art expectations and they really inspired me to want to dive into this topic. So I think art expectations is something that we all struggle with and when I say art expectations I'm really just meaning comparing yourself to others. I'm going to be framing it through the context of art but I'm sure that there will be some things that we can use to apply in other areas of our life as well. Now I want to share with you a personal story about how this affected me in quite a negative way a couple of years ago. So at the time I was studying at university and I was in a relationship with somebody that was also doing the same degree as me and the first thing I noticed when I saw her was just how amazing her artwork was and technically she was really skilled. She had great control over values and composition and anatomy and it was one of the first things that actually made me quite attracted to her because I thought wow that's just somebody that's really good at art and I felt the enthusiasm and the feelings that she had when she was drawing it it was quite infectious and so that affected me quite a bit now as we started dating because we had the same classes at a certain point I started to first of all subconsciously compare myself to her now, a bit of backstory. I didn't really do that much art in high school and I only really started picking it up when I got to university. That's when I started learning how to draw, how to plot perspective grids and I was introduced to the whole notion of studying art because before then I didn't even really know what I was doing. For her, she had been doing it for pretty much her entire life and she had a lot of experience in that. So this is kind of the first problem that I was running into when I had the comparisons is that it's not always fair or it's actually never fair to compare yourself to other people just because of all the different life experiences that people have beforehand. So I felt pretty insecure and it got worse and worse over time and I think I couldn't really stop that feeling and I wasn't sure what it was and I felt like a terrible partner because of it because I was feeling like unknowingly everything was just almost like a competition between us uh, which was something that she actively tried to avoid and was very understanding and told me a lot about not going into that headspace but it was still happening and I wasn't really entirely sure why and I think a big part of it has to do with confidence and that insecurity because I really wasn't sure what I was going to do with my art or what I wanted to achieve. I was just sort of there doing my classes and trying to get better at it. But when I took a step back, I realized that the comparisons wasn't even just with her specifically, but it extended beyond that to other people as well. And I would definitely say that put a strain on our relationship because of those comparisons and because of somebody that I was supposed to be close to ended up being someone that I was competing with. And uh, that is, let me just tell you, that is not a healthy way of thinking, especially in, in a relationship. And so I bring that up just to illustrate how crippling it can be to compare yourself to other people and how it's really just not even real in a sense. I'll explain that in a second. But you have to think that comparing yourself to other people I like to think of it as a collective consciousness. So in my experience, let's just say that you go on ArtStation and you start scrolling through the amazing sea of artists that are out there and they're posting their best work or people that you might see on Instagram or people that you might see on YouTube or other places and you just have a sense of being overwhelmed because there is so much great work out there and you're seeing the best of everybody and you know where you stand among them, at least that you try and gauge yourself to see where you are with all of the rest of the artists. Now, this is the first thing that I want to delve into a little bit because I thought about the idea of a collective consciousness of people. Because when you go on ArtStation or when you go on YouTube or whatever social media platform that you're on and you're looking at art, it's not just 
one person. It's a sea of people. And everybody in that is showing their best work. And you kind of judge yourself based off of the best of what people are offering. The ironic thing about that though, is that sometimes, well, I mean, everybody has weaknesses, right? So when you look at somebody and you think, man, that's such an amazing anatomy artist. And then you skip onto the next person and you say, wow, their environment design is crazy. I have no idea how they do that. Or then you look over at somebody else's composition and you're like, man, they have just nailed it. The thing is, you're looking at people's best traits as well and comparing it to what you have, which you might not think is much. Well, I'm telling you that at a certain point, you will become part of that collective consciousness and other people will be looking at your work and kind of comparing themselves to that as well. So that's why I think that comparing yourself to the collective consciousness is such a dangerous thing because it also never really ends and you can't pinpoint exactly what it is, but it's just so much external factors and so much outside of it that it gets really crippling in a way. The reason why I feel like comparing yourself to other people never really works out is because of that reason. It's because it's an external force that's outside of you. And as we know, like external things, we can't really control what happens outside of us. Now to get deep for a second, if we think about our experience of life, it's happening through our consciousness and sort of the things that are going on with how we perceive the world, the information that we put into ourselves and judge things by. The external stuff is, again, like I said, completely out of our control. We can't change whether or not it rains tomorrow, or we can't change whether or not certain things happen to us despite our best efforts, but we can change how we view things and how we interpret stuff. And I think this is kind of the main thing I, I wanna be hitting on in this video about comparing yourself to other people. If you were to ask me why we compare ourselves to other people, I, I would have to assume it's because we're looking at ourselves and kind of gauging where we are in society and how we fit in with that. And that information can be very important to us. But at a certain point, if it's making us feel overwhelmed and upset and kind of discouraged, I think that can be a very dangerous, well, obviously not a great mindset to be in. Something else too that I want to touch on is that we don't know the full story about the people that we're looking at online. And I'm sure we all know this, but when we look on social media and we see the best that people have to offer, we often don't see all of the failures behind that and all of the hardship and all of the negative emotions that might have that person might have gone through. Now, this past week, I was talking to my mom and she had this really great analogy that I want to share with you guys. And she was saying that, let's just say you're driving down a road and you're in this decent car. It's all right. You know, it's got four wheels and an engine. It's driving okay. And you have a very specific destination that you're driving to and that you're going towards. Well, if you're going down this freeway and you turn around, you turn right, you turn left and you see Lamborghinis and really amazing sports cars and maybe muscle cars. As you can tell, I, I don't know much about cars. I'm just saying that you're going to look at them and think, damn, that's a pretty cool car. But because you know where you're going, you're not going to think, damn, I really wish I had that car. That would be amazing if I was driving in it right now. The point that I'm trying to make here is that if you have confidence in yourself and you know what you want and you've really thought about it, when you see other people having amazing successes, you will realize that it doesn't have to take away from yours. Or just because somebody is moving at a certain pace, it doesn't take away from who you are as a person. And the beauty about it is that everybody has their own journey to go on. And sometimes if we start comparing ourselves to let's just say how much money we're making or if we're married yet, or if we're in a good relationship, or if we have a house, whatever expectations that society says we should have at a certain age, if we don't have that then, then we start to internalize it and think maybe something is wrong with us. But I'm just saying that once I graduated university, I realized that life doesn't move in a linear fashion. And up to that point, I was pretty used to that. I mean, you know, so you go to primary school and then you go to high school and then you graduate from that, you go to university, 
or TAFE or whatever and then you finish that you get a job and you just keep moving upwards and onwards and that's kind of the expectation about where people should be at certain points of their life but the thing is again just mentioning the external factors it's hard to control that it's hard to say where our life is going to be in five years time and we can absolutely have goals to get towards where we want to go but I think being a little bit more obsessive over the time or wishing something should happen yet just because other people are experiencing it, it can be a very sad mindset to be in. Because the reality is we're all moving at our own pace and I feel like when we compare ourselves to people that have had major life events or something like that, let's just say that your friend got married and you're thinking, damn, I'm still single, or maybe they got a really awesome promotion at, at work and, and you're still stuck with your job that you're not entirely happy about. I think sometimes we're sort of closing the book while the ink is still wet. And I'm saying that because in the moment, we feel that little sting of, damn, there is something wrong with me, or that just that comparison feeling. But we're not looking at ourselves and realizing that there are good things for us around the corner, you know, and that again, the timing of stuff is important. And just because somebody went through this thing, it doesn't have to take away where we're going because like on the freeway, some people don't have entirely huge destinations in front of them. They'll stop and they'll get out at a place that's closer to where you're going. But as long as you keep looking down that road and see that thing on the horizon, it'll make it a lot easier to deal with. I think sometimes that the idea of confidence can get a little bit mixed up because to me, confidence doesn't always have to be a loud roar in a crowd. Confidence can be quiet and within you and you don't need to announce it to everybody outside that you are amazingly confident, I'm sure you are, but I'm just saying that true confidence, I feel like, stems from within and it definitely dictates your actions and how you carry yourself and because you know exactly where you want to be going and it doesn't have to take away from other people's success as well. The whole famine mentality is I don't really like it because I feel like there are enough successes to go around for everybody because well, we all at the baseline, let's just be real. We all want to be happy. We all want to have fulfilling lives. And so success can look wildly different to different people and other people need different things in order to be happy. But that's just the thing. We don't have to have other people's successes because I'm sure if we did, we might realize, hey, actually, this isn't for me. And I remember a couple of years ago when I was still back in university, I can't remember where I found this, but it was essentially a quote saying that something like, every day you don't do art. It's just somebody else's day to get better than you. Something super dramatic like that. And at the time, I remember thinking like, damn, damn, that is good. I like that a lot. And so I kind of lived like that a little bit where I would wake up and if I wasn't doing art, I would be thinking in the back of my head, somebody else out there is getting better than me. I have to keep grinding and doing all of this stuff. And I just realized now thinking about it, that is such a stupid mindset because again, why does it have to be so competitive? Why are we always competing with other people? And I, I just feel like I don't really want to play the rules to that game because other people can have successes and that's fine. But I feel like for me anyway, what I want for my life is, is different from other people. And it's not at all the same thing. Life is, is really crazy. And sometimes what we want doesn't end up happening and we find something that's actually better for us. And I think just having that faith in that and again, really thinking about what you want and where you're going can, can help you out. Okay, so let's actually get into some practical ways of combating this kind of comparison dialogue that we have in our head. If you have anything else to add, I would really love it for you guys to comment. So for me specifically, I'm just gonna use myself as an example. Re the only person that you should be comparing yourself to is yourself, right? And I mean, that is very basic. It's not like a huge bombshell of truth them dropping or anything. But it's worth repeating because I think that sometimes even knowing all of this stuff in the heat of the moment, it's hard to kind of remember all of this, but just affirming it again and again can help you. I found some of this other analogy that I thought was, was quite apt uh, that I want to share with you. And it's 
basically at the gym, it doesn't matter if somebody is bench pressing 30 kilos and, and they can't go heavier than that. And somebody else is bench pressing 300 kilos and they can't go heavier than that. Both of them are feeling the same strain and they're both getting stronger. So you really don't have to worry about being, you know, the strongest person in the room. You just have to worry about being stronger than you were yesterday. So I would really encourage you guys to take a look back at your past achievements. What are some things that you're really proud of? What are some things that really made you happy, that you worked hard for and that you got better at and you can actually pinpoint and look back and say, man, when I started this thingy, I was really bad at it, but now I'm pretty good or I'm decent or I'm getting better or I'm putting in the work, whatever it is. Every skill that we pick up, every skill that we start at, of course, we're not gonna be great at it. And obviously some things we might pick up faster than others, but having that realistic expectation of ourselves and just not beating ourselves up, I think is, is a good place to, to step towards. And another thing that I like to do is when I do have these thoughts about comparing myself to others, I start to question my, my own line of thinking and I just kind of pull it apart and see where it goes because if I'm comparing myself, I think, okay, well, why am I comparing myself to this person? Why do I feel this certain way? Um, they might be younger than me, they might be doing more than me, they might be more successful or whatever. And I'm thinking, do I really want what they have? And what is it about me that's feeling a little bit insecure right now? How can I get to the bottom of this? And also just realizing that, is my thought actually based in reality? I think sometimes when we look at people, we can again sort of fill in the rest of the story without knowing the context and we're missing out a lot of different pieces that might make us see them differently. And I'm not saying this in a negative way. I'm just saying that, again, it comes back down to managing realistic expectations and not treating ourselves too harshly. At a certain point, you just realize that you have your own path to walk on and you have your own successes and your own failures to go on as well. And that's beautiful. You don't have to do everything that everybody else is doing. and. At the baseline, like I mentioned earlier, we just all want to be happy. And that is a different criteria for all of us. I think back when I was in university, when I was going through that very insecure phase about my artwork, I just remember feeling a lot of stress. And because of that, because I felt like I was kind of competing with everybody at a certain point, even just like subconsciously, I wasn't really going out and trying to beat other people or something like that. But I felt this immense pressure on me to always deliver and always perform. But as I realized throughout the years that my art, what it means to me is me putting my emotions out there and me trying to connect with other people and honestly share with them my experiences and be honest about the things that I've gone through so that it might help somebody else and hopefully give you guys more realistic expectations. Because again, everybody goes through this stuff. There is no point at art achievement that you will not go through this. I think that sometimes if you look up to certain artists, if you ask them if they feel sometimes like imposter syndrome or that they don't belong or they're comparing themselves to other people, I can almost guarantee you everybody has gone through it. It's just, it's in human nature. And that's why I feel like having goals, like to be the best artist ever in the world, obviously, I mean, that's awesome, you know, if you want to be the best possible artist you can be and to strive for that perfection of the craft, that's commendable. But it's also ultimately vague because we have no idea what it means, really. Like, how do you know you're the best artist? Is it when you've reached a certain status? Is it when you've sold a certain amount of books? Is it when a lot of people know who you are? Because they're all different qualifications for success. So I think getting more specific with your goals and understanding what it is you're trying to achieve can also help this, this thought. Because when, for example, I do a lot of 2D illustration and I do a little bit of 3D here and there, but if I see somebody that's an amazing 3D artist, I'm not gonna think, oh man, my 3D has to be better. I have to put in more hours and get really awesome at doing anatomy and everything like that. You know, it's, um, it's just fighting an uphill battle because I'm straying off of my own goals because I feel this insecurity in order to, feel better about myself by putting more hours into this other thing that ultimately I'm really just not interested in. You don't want to be climbing a ladder so high only to realize that it's on the wrong wall. None of us have concrete proof of what the future will look like. So, you know, 
just because somebody blew up faster than you on social media or they picked up the skill quicker. Treat yourself kindly, be mindful and focus on yourself because you will be a lot more thankful for it. Um, it's, it's easy to forget our achievements and it's important to remember that, to remember what we've done, how far we've come, because obviously we're living in ourselves all the time and it's hard to realize big change. And the thing specifically with art is that this skill takes a long time to develop and it takes many hours of practice. And sometimes, you know, the art gains that we make aren't always easily identifiable. And, you, you know, you might not realize it, but art experience comes in the way of things outside just the technical stuff, right? So the stuff that we see on social media, there's actually a lot behind that as well. It's things like how you carry yourself as a person, how you approach tasks, your dependability and determination and everything else like that are just as equally as important than actually just being able to produce great artwork. And I believe that all of this is important because they exist within the realm of longevity. So if you're serious about having an art career and moving towards earning a full-time living from this sort of thing, there are many skills outside just being able to do art. And I think that developing those other areas is just as important. If you think about it, all of us have unique handwriting. We're not consciously trying to copy other people or creating ours. It's just our style. It's, it's already there. So finding what that is for you and tapping into it is going to be amazing because you will feel so compelled to create art and you will actually start to enjoy it again. At least this is what happened for me when I started drawing a lot of lo-fi artwork. Though handwriting is actually just a small part compared to what we're trying to say and the message of our work is far more important. And um, for me anyway, sometimes I like to just create art without a goal as well. So I'll draw, play with lines. And for me, you know, another thing that I can offer for how to combat these thoughts is to just take away the pressure of creating art. And I like to think about this like being in the sandbox. So you just create art without a goal, like literally. You can open up Photoshop or have a sketchbook or whatever and just draw, play with lines, put color on there. It doesn't have to be representative of anything. It doesn't even have to look like anything, but the tactile act of moving your pen across or your paintbrush or whatever it is, that feeling I remember as a kid drawing, that's sort of the thing that I fell in love with firstly. You know, I would be creating comics and stuff, but I didn't care what the comic ended up being like. It's just, I like drawing. And I think that tapping into that again can really help us focus on the task at hand and not be too stressed out when we go to create. I think sometimes the ironic thing is our insecurities might not even be visible to other people because they don't know the full story either, just as we don't know stuff about them. And really just to hammer this home, but everybody is different right? We operate differently. So we all have different schedules, situations, lifestyles, desires, goals, dreams, genetics, even different cultures that we're from, different family members, different life circumstances. And I think that when you consider all of those different things and you focus on your own and kind of the best that you can offer, that's really the only thing that you can do is put yourself out there, and be the best version of you that you can be. I personally try to look towards others to be inspired and to continue finding and forging my own artistic identity, which is special to me. I wanna wrap up this video now and just summarize some of the things that I was talking about. So firstly, the collective consciousness is the idea or the thing that we're going up against every time we compare ourselves to other people. Because rarely it's, it's just one person. You know, it's one person at this point in time and then it moves towards somebody else and then somebody else. And before you know it, there's like five different people with vastly different circumstances that you're comparing yourself to all of them. So just be aware of that. It doesn't really exist because to somebody else, you are part of that collective consciousness. And no matter what level of art, fame or notoriety that you get, I feel like that can always still be part of you if you're not careful with it. The second point that I want to summarize is the idea of success. So if because somebody has blown up faster than you on social media or that they've got a better job or whatever it might be, really consider what do you want in your life? What is success? 
you really have to just question your line of thinking and, and get to the core of your motivations and see, okay, do I want success? Do I want a high follower account because it will validate me in some way? Or is it because I actually want to reach out to other people or whatever? And, you know, obviously I'm guilty of this as well. That little number that ticks, it, it can, we can get conditioned to focusing on that. But I realized that the number really doesn't matter as long as I'm putting my best work out there and being honest with myself that's the things that I can control and the other stuff beyond that whether I get a better job or more followers or whatever I really don't have control over it and sure I can create the necessary conditions to meet or to bring that goal to have more of a chance of happening but whether or not it actually happens is vague the third thing that I want to summarize is looking back into your past self. So really just see where you came from. How long have you been doing art? Have you been doing art for 10 years and you still feel like you haven't really made much progress? Well, don't worry. The last 10 years haven't been a waste of time. You've learned something through those 10 years that you can use today. This video is art related, but if we look back in just points of our life, I'm sure there's definitely things that we're proud of. Remember that and use that to show how far that you've come. There is no wasted time. Time just moves forward. And whether or not we decide to learn from our experiences is the more important thing. It's what we've done yesterday that can lead to how we act today and affect tomorrow, ultimately. So I really hope that this video was helpful to you guys in some way. I would really appreciate a comment below if you have any future topics that you would like me to cover. Just send me a DM or anything like that. And uh, just treat yourself kindly and stay safe. Take care, everybody, and see you next time.